My name is Christopher Knight. I was only twenty years old when I walked away from society. I had a strong feeling to leave the world behind. All my life, I had been comfortable being alone, and I lived alone for twenty-seven years. I had been working for less than a year installing home and vehicle alarm system near Boston, Massachusetts. Without giving any notice to my boss, I quit my job and I didn't return my tools. Then I cashed my final paycheck and left town. I did not tell anyone where I was going because I had no one to tell. I didn't have any friends and I had no interest in my coworkers. After leaving my hometown, I drove down the east coast of America, eating fast food and staying in the cheapest motel I could find. I traveled along for days until I found myself deep into Florida. Eventually, I turned around and headed north. By that time, Ronald Reagan was president. I dived through Georgia, Carolina, and Virginia, and at last, I drove north to Maine, to where I grew up. There are not many roads in the center of the state, and I chose the one that went right by my family's house. I think it was just to have one last look around, to say goodbye. I did not stop, and it was the last time I saw my family home. I kept going up and up and up. Soon I reached the shore of Moosehead Lake. I drove until I nearly ran out of gas. I took a small road, then a small road off that small road, then a trail off that. I went as far into the wilderness as my vehicle could take me. I parked the car and tossed the key on the center console. I had a tent and a backpack, but no compass, no map. Without knowing where I was going, with no particular place in mind, I stepped into the trees and walked away. I felt more like myself in the woods than in the society. Despite suffering, cold weather, no light or fire, twenty-seven years of complete isolation is when I truly find freedom. After twenty-seven years, I was arrested. I was charged with burglary and theft, and taken to the local jail because I was stealing food at a lakeside summer camp. After I got arrested, letters and visitors arrived at the jail, and approximately five hundred journalists requested an interview. I remembered a documentary film team showed up, and a woman proposed marriage. Michael Finkel shared my story in his book called *The Stranger in the Woods*, and it was published twenty seventeen. From my experience, I think you can learn that sometimes it's best to be by yourself, and learn about you. And the best place to do that is in the isolated environment. Hello, my name is Steve Fuller, and since 1973, about 45 years, I have been the winter caretaker in Yellowstone National Park. I studied history at the San Francisco campus of Antioch University, toured Europe, Uganda, and moved to West Yellowstone. Over the winter, I live in one of the oldest structures in the park, an old small cabin on a hill. I arrive in November and spend my days covering plants that don't do well in the cold. Preparing parts of the park for summer and shoveling the snow off of a hundred roofs a day so they don't collapse. There isn't a calendar to my job. I leave when Mother Nature decides. I have never gotten cabin fever and I have never gotten bored. In my free time, I enjoy the company of my cats, cross country skiing, reading, and listening to the radio. But one of my overall favorite activities is to take photos. During the winter. I take pictures of the landscapes out here, and during the summer, I travel to Africa to take pictures of the sun. Many of my pictures have been seen, seen in National Geographic. My experience as a caretaker has affected me by helping me pursue my belief in the importance of time to reflect. 
I like times of solidarity as I like being around people, but both are equally important and what a better place to experience solidarity and quiet than an environment that has such a vast landscape with such peaceful sounds. This job has affected the way I live while not working because I work in the national park throughout the year and live in West Yellowstone ori originally with my wife who also worked in the park but we separated later in my career. My experience in working in isolation could teach how time alone for reflection and relaxation is beneficial but being with people is still important. Hello, my name is Blanche Monnier. I was once a beautiful French socialite, but in 1878, when I was 25 years old, I fell in love with a lawyer below my station. My mother was furious and tried to get me to break things off with him. She plotted against me and forbade me from seeing my love, but her efforts failed. Then, out of anger, she locked me in a small room for the next 25 years. It was like I disappeared off the face of the earth. My friends mourned my absence as did my mother and brother. They fooled everyone and acted as if they didn't know I was living in a sunless room in my mother's house, starving and rotting in my own filth. My love passed away on May 31st, 1901, and after, an anonymous tip was sent to the attorney general with my location. I was found, and my mother was arrested, and 15 days later, she died from heart failure. My experience greatly affected my life afterward. I suffered from mental problems, for the rest of my life and was sent to a psychiatric hospital where I later passed in 1913. My experience can teach how important social interaction is because without it, it can induce issues that lead to fatal effects. Hello, my name is Tom Neal. I was born in 1902 in Wellington, New Zealand, but my family moved to Greymouth while I was still a baby and then to Timaru when I was seven years old. I joined the Royal New Zealand Navy as a young man, but at 18, I was too old to become an apprentice seaman and signed on as an apprentice engineer instead. For the next four years, I traveled through the Pacific Islands on Navy ships before buying my way out of the Navy to have greater freedom to see the islands independently. I spent the next six years wandering from island to island, taking short-term jobs on inter-island trade ships, clearing bushes, and planting bananas. After a few months back in Timaru in 1928, I returned to the Pacific Islands, settled in Moro, Tahiti, where I lived until 1943, supporting myself with odd jobs and enjoying a private life. I was then offered a job as a relieving storekeeper in the Cook Islands, running small shops in various islands while their normal keepers were on leave. I went to the Cook Islands twice before deciding to stay for good. For the first time in 1952, the second in 1956, and the third and final time in 1964, until my death in 1977. This experience affected me by showing me the importance of isolation and showing myself how much I can do on my own. My time affected my life afterwards because I was eventually able to write about my time alone in a book, An Island to Oneself, which was published nine years after my death. My experience can teach that social interaction is important, but self-discovery and self-support is equally as important.